Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout, joined by Alan Malventano. We are here today to talk to you about, I think, I think finally, mm -hmm. a FreeSync monitor that we can recommend to people. I'd say so. This is the ASUS MG279Q. Uh, this this monitor has an interesting history, actually. So this this we just got this here today. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the I think it's one of the first in the United States. I think it's been for sale in Europe for a couple of weeks. It has. Uh, we first saw this at CES. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was not a FreeSync monitor at the time. It was just Correct. rated as an IPS 120 hertz variable refresh, variable refresh rate. rate monitor with no mm -hmm. kind of company affiliation. Mm -hmm. uh, fast forward a little bit, AMD comes into the picture with FreeSync. They start talking about. I mean, it's not a, it's not labeled a G Sync monitor at any point. You mean FreeSync? No, G Sync. It was like during CES, it was not a G Sync monitor oh, or right, a FreeSync right, right, monitor. Right. Neither. Yeah. AMD comes into the picture, and uh, we kind of see some things happen. The uh -huh. monitor changes from 120 hertz display. 244 hertz refresh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. display, and it has a FreeSync logo. Mm -hmm. Now we're very interested. Now we're yep. very curious about what's going to happen here. And so now we actually have the monitor in our hands. We've, we've looked through the specifications. We've done some testing. We've done some evaluation ourselves. Give me the rundown on this, Alan. What are the important specs of this display? Okay, so it's 25 by 14 display. That's uh, good. That's good. Uh, the panel is capable of 144 hertz. 144 hertz, maximum refresh rate. Maximum refresh rate, yeah. Also good. Um, it is IPS. Great. So also, all, also good. All the the I don't want to say all, but most of the FreeSync monitors that were out up to this point mm -hmm. have been uh, TN panels. We did have an LG IPS that, that was one of the yeah that 34 34 UM67. It was like a wide yeah 21 by nine. Yeah. Uh, I think the resolution was actually 2560 by 1080. Mm -hmm. So that was IPS, but it kind of had a, it had a maximum refresh rate of 75 hertz. Right. So this is IPS 25 by 14, mm -hmm. 144 hertz maximum refresh. Correct. All that's adding up good. That's great so far. However, okay. uh, this does not come with FreeSync enabled. You have to go into the OSD and enable it. Okay. All right. So, okay when you, so when you first plug it in, it just doesn't show up as a FreeSync panel. Kind of had a scratch in our heads initially for a few seconds right. there. Like, no pop-up that kind of comes yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, I thought this was uh, FreeSync capable. So you turn it on the OSD. The display actually like reinitializes. It almost like it reboots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like it restarts almost as if it was a different display, right. really. Uh, Windows kind of sees it, you know, gives you all the sounds. You hear the as chimes. Just, yeah, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but then you are limited to a maximum of 90 hertz for FreeSync. Okay. So okay. this is, if you, if you look at the, actually it says it in the on-screen display. When you look to enable FreeSync mode, right. it very clearly says 35 to 90 hertz. Mm -hmm. If you are... If you were at 120 or 144, which are two other options that you have. That you have set in Windows. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're at those options, you'll get a little pop-up in the center of the screen. It'll just say, hey, can't, you can't do FreeSync can't at this frequency. It's disabling FreeSync or you can't enable it or something like right. that. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, so you have to drop it to 90. Um, but that said, I mean, it's, it's good. It's still a good experience at 90. That's, you know. So, so essentially what that means, the, the 35 to 90 range is, is telling us that very important range that we need to know about variable refresh monitors. What's the right. minimum and what's the maximum refresh? Mm -hmm. So this monitor is an interesting kind of combination, right? So it's a free sync monitor that operates from 35 frames per second to mm -hmm. 90 frames per second, mm -hmm. uh, right? In a variable refresh capability. Yes. Uh, it is rated at a 144 hertz uh, screen, but yeah, you, on the box there's a big 144. Yeah, but yeah. you can't have FreeSync enabled to take advantage of that. Correct. So if you want to uh, game at 144 hertz, you can do that, but you're going to be stuck with either enabling or disabling VSync across the entire range of frame rates. Yes. Um, which is, I, you know, I don't want to say it's a downside. It's more of a choice, right? Like you, now you yeah. get the option. Do you want to, you know, you can go through the manual uh, controls here and change it to 144 hertz in Windows, or you can actually, I guess, use Windows to do it. Change it to 144 hertz when you're in desktop mode, right? And just have the advantages and the smooth mousing experience and that type of stuff mm -hmm. with it. Mousing and then take it down a, to 90. Mousing is a little bit better though at 90. Oh, is it? Like compared to 60. Even you were noticing oh, it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, if yeah. You're, if you're sitting at 90, it's still a noticeable improvement. Oh, correct. Over 60, right? Uh, yeah. If, you know, if, you're, you're still getting a 50% improvement in, right. in your frame rate, right? Which is right. nothing to sneeze at. So, I mean, it, so a couple of things. One, the 90 hertz maximum refresh is, uh, it's better than we have seen on any IPS FreeSync monitor. Correct. But it is lower than what we have seen on the TN FreeSync monitors. Mm -hmm. The 35 uh, FPS or hertz bottom limit is the lowest. Is the lowest we have seen on any FreeSync monitor, mm -hmm. I believe. I think uh, the, the LG was like 42. Mm -hmm. and the I BenQ was 40. Was 40, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a, like a new minimum 
ceiling or I'm sorry, minimum floor a, for a variable lower, refresh. lower minimum, yeah. Now the same things occur that we've already talked about with FreeSync when your frame rate drops below 35 hertz, mm -hmm. though, right? You under 35 or above 90. Yes. You now have your decision of VSync enabled or VSync disabled. So do you want the horizontal tearing that mm -hmm. comes with the uh, VSync off, or do you want the potential for stutter and judder with VSync on? Those are now your options right. on this monitor. But it's, it's. I think it's easier to tune a game to fall within that window. Yes. You because know, a lot of your concern is you, you tend want to tend to turn things up when you have a variable refresh panel in general mm -hmm. because it kind of tricks you into thinking that you ha you're having a smoother experience because right. it is actually smoother than it would have been with VSync on or off, mm -hmm. really. So you tend to turn things higher, and if you can get another 5 or 12 or whatever that works out to compared to the other FreeSync mm -hmm. panel you're comparing yeah. to, if you can get some more on the low end there, that's good, right? So I think it's kind of worth the trade-off of not being able to go all the way to 144. Yeah. Uh, because if you're playing recent titles on this and you're turning your settings up, chances are you're not going to be over 90 that much. Right. Right? I, so, I think, so you should I be in the window the whole time. That it's you're an gaming. interesting kind of political discussion that we don't really need to get into here, but like some of the hardware changes that maybe happened inside this monitor from when we first saw it at CES to what we see it today. It has bounced around, yeah. Uh, the idea that you know you have you have this kind of window with with uh, with current scalar technology to yeah. enable variable refresh. They could have gone 35 to 90 like they did with this monitor, mm -hmm. or maybe they could have gone like 45 to 120. Right? Is that mm -hmm. a better window than 35 to 90? You're obviously extending up quite a bit, but you're losing some on the low side, yeah. where I think the low side is more important for that kind of game. Uh, especially experience. for a panel at this resolution. Right? 25 by 40. Yeah, if this was a 1080p panel, I'd you know, want yep. the higher end, obviously, right? But for, for this resolution, speaking of uh, scalar improvements, mm -hmm. uh, so this panel has two DisplayPort inputs, one of which is mini DisplayPort. Odd, but okay, sure. We'll go with Both that. of which can work with FreeSync. Okay. Okay, so you could have two separate systems feeding this display, mm -hmm. not like at the same time, like you know, you'd have to switch between the two <laughs> sure, of them, sure, right? Sure. But you have, this is the first, I think of any variable refresh rate panel, G-Sync or FreeSync, where we've had two inputs that were capable of okay. doing the variable refresh, right? That's good. Um, there's also two HDMI inputs. They're not variable capable. No, nope, they're just regular but they're HDMI. Just HDMI 1.4 inputs. Yes. You've got a USB hub on it. Yep. Uh, it the, it does not have a power brick for the for the cord. Yeah, right? yeah the, the power Power's adapter is into the inside. Device. Yeah, it does add it. Um, it the the design. Those watching the video, the design looks kind of sort of like an ROG Swift from Asus, right? The the base. Yeah, let's let's talk about the build quality of yeah. this, right? So we were big fans of the ROG Swift, which mm -hmm. is the not the original G Sync monitor from Asus, but the twenty five by fourteen TN panel that really really kind of took off yeah. uh, in the market. This is a very similar build to it. Like just both in terms of looks mm -hmm. and in terms of uh, kind of style and build quality, there are some differences. Like the platform you were pointing out here is the same basic shape. Same basic shape. Uh, it doesn't. It, it it does have this rotation, but the base doesn't rotate. There's like a little circle underneath. That yeah, rotates, yeah. Which so is a little odd, with the but. Swift, you have a circle here at the base, and yeah. then when you go to rotate it, just the arm. Rotates right. and the stand, the, the actual flat part of the base stays still. But you still have you still have your height adjustment here. You still got a fairly good height adjustment range on mm -hmm. this monitor. It does go down a little bit lower than a Swift. If you're familiar yep. with the Swift, you get like an, about another inch, so it almost kind of sits flat on the table. Yeah, it's pretty nice, which is handy. And you can rotate it in portrait mode if you want as well. And and because it's an IPS screen, that's actually a usable. Yeah, yeah. You don't system you don't it, get so. that effect where one eye sees a slightly different contrast than the yeah. other because they're you know on a different angle. Yeah, very it's, good viewing. It's got angles. very similar buttons and OSD functionality as the ROG Swift. Mm -hmm. The bezels are maybe a little bit thicker than the yep. ROG Swift. The screen still has kind of a, the matte finish. Yep, that yep. The Swift in the back is a little bit thicker because of the power supply, which I think is a good trade off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's I would gladly add some thickness to a Swift just to not have that brick sitting right. on the floor. Yeah, yeah. So I. I think you and I both agree it's it's not quite as good as the Swift in terms of build quality, just the way it kind of the weight and the type of plastic they use and yeah, it's, it's like it's close, they though. now granted though this display is several hundred dollars cheaper it's, than a Swift, right? This is right. This is this this is selling today for five hundred ninety nine dollars, mm -hmm. and the Swift was seven ninety nine. I believe it still is. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a couple hundred dollars off of mm -hmm. the Swift, you've got about $150 off of the Acer um, XB270HU, which is the IPS G-Sync right. 
the current, no. the kind of our current favorite G-Sync monitor. Correct. 25 by 14 IPS. Uh, similar specifications to this, although that yeah. does go all the way up to. Uh, That's a 144, 144 hertz. and it has no bottom, right, as we've talked right. about with G-Sync before. Uh, but the build quality of this just walks all over that yeah. Acer panel. Those Acer, um, those Acer VRR panels have been, they're pretty cheap feeling, yeah. honestly. Uh, but to be fair, again, like even this compared to the Swift, once you get it set up on your desk, you're not going to be sliding it and tilting it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried it, that so. much about the rotation yeah, thing. It's, I, it's you know, fine. It's, it, that part's fine. Um, you don't have any red logo at the bottom, although it would make more sense because it's an AMD product now. <laughs> it's but, true. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that as it is. So... Uh, you do get the snap-in... Uh, yeah, you get, you get a cable... It's, it's harder cable to show in the photos there. in the article, but there's a, like a snap-in piece with three holes in the back, and you basically just... You kind of like put your cables where you want, and then you know, just snap, in, nice. the, snap like, in a I, clip. Yeah, it's nice. I knew when we saw this at CES that this was going to be a very popular monitor because mm -hmm. of its, at the time, its peak refresh rate, its variable refresh, its lower price. I think we're still there. I still think, uh, in terms of the FreeSync monitors that we've touched, this is the first one that I've been like, you know what, I can, I can see myself using this. I can see a lot of people using this. Yeah. If you have a 290, 290X, maybe you're looking to buy one of the new Fury X cards or something like that. I think this is the perfect matchup for that. Even though AMD builds the Fury X as a 4K uh, graphics card, Right. I still think that's very much a stretch. 25 by 14 is kind of that, that perfect spot for that much compute power. Mm -hmm. This gives you that, and it gives you variable refresh rate in the kind of the largest range. Maybe not the largest range, but the lowest minimum and the largest range on an IPS screen right, right, that right. we've seen so far. Um, I would say that like my only holdback on just to, like just saying like this is it, mm -hmm. right, is really just the fact that you are limited on the high end at 90. Yeah, um, that's fair. And the only reason I bring that up is because you do have other FreeSync panels that do go higher, right? But ben they're TN. The BenQ, yeah, it is a TN but panel, TN. but some gamers want really, really fast sure. response, right? This is, this is only a four millisecond response. The BenQ is a one millisecond response panel. Mm -hmm. It's very fast. Some people are less worried about the color reproduction and more worried and about... viewing angles and stuff like that. And yeah, the viewing angles. I understand. Right? So it, it, it really is kind of a you know, gamer-specific toss-up between this that panel... Is. You know, slightly higher build quality versus the BenQ, um, kind of shift to the left on the on the range, right? right? Uh, the BenQ, they have fixed supposedly the, the issue overdrive. with overdrive, right. which brings me to overdrive on this panel. Very important topic. Um, this does have overdrive. Overdrive does work. Okay. It doesn't seem to be tuned as well as it should be. I guess is the best way we can explain it. It's adjustable. There is an adjustment. It actually has six points of adjustment. It's 0 through 100 and 20% increments. 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the default to 60 is actually called, what was it called? Trace free. Yeah, that's it's the feature. It's a weird name screen. for the thing that's Trace called. Trace free. It's really overdrive. Yeah. Um, the default out of the box was 60. And there was just obvious negative ghosting. In other words, just the overdrive was too aggressive. It's making it. It's making the previous frame like too dark. Yeah, too it dark actually light. goes yeah. too far the other way, and you end up with an uh, like an inverse right. in the in the in, in the trailing edge of of something that's moving across the screen. But you could adjust it. It is adjustable, uh, but to fully get rid of the negative ghost, mm -hmm. I had to take it all the way to zero. Mm -hmm. there, you can't go any further the other way, right. right? And when you're at zero, it's it's still kind of doing overdrive but it's almost too weak at that point to so really you're just basically saying the difference between the setting at zero and the setting at 20 is still not the right balance right you think yeah you get at a little 20, bit you get a little bit of the inverse ghost but way less less ghosting, less like ghosting. less you know you're actually doing overdrive at 20 versus right. at zero where it almost seems like you're not but right? uh, but i mean to be fair like we have some screenshots that will show up in this video and yeah. also uh, on the full story at pcper.com like this is an IPS screen compared to the other IPS FreeSync monitor we've looked at. This is significantly better. Oh yeah, because and the, it's even you mean, the, you mean the LG? The LG. Well, that wasn't overdriving at all. Those fan blades. Yeah, yeah, you could see three and it's frames. And still probably worth of... even better than the initial experience we had with the BenQ on the TN. Absolutely. Side of things. Yes. Yeah. So, I we're we're still waiting to get our our new uh, monitor, our new uh, TN monitor from BenQ to see how their firmware update actually affected things. Mm -hmm. But I think this, the MG two seven nine Q, kind of proves that. They understand it now, and they're working towards that. It's maybe yes. not perfect, yes, but it's drastically improved on the on the overdrive side compared to all the other displays. Yeah, it it is it is before. doable now. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. I, I sat yeah. down. I I played a, a ton of games on this today, mm -hmm. and um, you know, other than the instances where you kind of drop below thirty five, right, and you see some stuff like I was playing Crisis Three, and that happened. Mm -hmm. It was easy to stay inside that window 
fairly easy to stay inside the 35 to 90 window. Right. Uh, and I, I was really happy with it. And the best part about it, like we've mentioned, is the price. $599. Mm -hmm. It's 200 bucks less than the Swift mm -hmm. that Asus also sells. It's 150 or $180 less than the Acer IPS mm -hmm. G-Sync monitor. So you are going to save some money with this. Yeah. Although you're going to get, you know, you're going to have some... There's still some experience differences, I guess is what it comes down to. That's Sorry, I'll bring the screen. will pop back up here in a second. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's pretty much all there is to say about it. You yeah. have a story up on, on the website. Yep. We have a story on, up. Uh, we're also going to link off to some of our other previous stuff in case you're just walking into this and you're wondering what the difference between the FreeSync and the G-Sync stuff is. There's should probably look at some of the uh, some of that other backstory yeah. uh, material. Yeah, PCPro.com, obviously, we'll have the link in the uh, description here or in an, uh, maybe in an overlay or an annotation somewhere as well. Definitely check it out. This is, I think, the first time I've been able to, to, to look to you as the viewers yeah. and say, you know, I, this is a good FreeSync monitor. I, I have no problems recommending this to mm -hmm. people if you have AMD GPU hardware. Thanks, guys. Uh, keep watching for more videos on displays and other hardware goodies. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks.